should say at the outset, Kurt Gödel's perhaps not as famous as many of the big thinkers uh, who, who, who I think Gödel belongs in this sort of company, such as uh, Darwin, Newton, Einstein, Aristotle and the like. Um, the main reason, I think, is logicians and mathematicians don't get their due. I think, you know, they don't just, it's hard to understand what a mathematician does. And so the goal of physics, we believe, is to find an equation, perhaps no more than one inch long, which will allow us to unify all the forces of nature and allow us to read the mind of God. When it comes to the bedrock of quantum mechanics, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. The basic motivation is just to learn how nature works. What's really going on? Einstein said it very nicely. He's not interested in this detailed question or that detailed question. He just wanted to know what were God's thoughts when he created the world. Now these physicists are not advocating for theism per se. They're not talking about religion. They're not necessarily talking about God in the way Christians, Muslims, and Jews mean when they say God, in a monotheistic way. But they're referring to a very broad, general manner of speaking. Basically just ultimate reality. Uh, for example, when Michio Kaku talks about the mind of God, he's talking about unifying the forces of nature. Uh, general relativity and quantum mechanics are not completely compatible with each other, but physicists search for a much more underlying theory that brings together relativity theory and quantum theory. God for them is completeness. From this one inch equation, all of the other equations of physics arise. That's their hope. What they're talking about is ultimate reality. That which simply is. In other words, 
the studying and working through the equations of physics and the logical consequences help us tie together the metaphysical realm and the physical realm, providing a complete picture of what is. How can the idea of God be so crazy when physicists themselves, cosmologists, keep using God as the creator, the condition setter for the universe? They never express their thoughts about the ultimate reality or ultimate source or the prime mover as the sky god or the spaghetti monster made the universe. What they are implying is that there is an ultimate source for the universe and this ultimate source holds the key to understanding how reality is. It is quite intuitive to understand that the universe is the product of an effectual cause, an effectual cause that brings order to nature's mechanisms, that is, Big Bang cosmology and the anthropic principle that physicists provided for humanity. It is this ordering that suggests decision making, deciding what needs to be for life to exist that leads to mind making the decisions. It makes sense that there is a mind behind how the universe works, a mind that brings order to nature's mechanisms. And of course, there are atheist physicists such as Michael Shermer, Lawrence Krauss, and Sean Carroll. The difference between non-theist physical scientists and physical scientists who are theists or who are at least open to the possibility that God exists is epistemology. Just like any other person or any other academic discipline, one needs good epistemology when considering how the world is. Physical scientists, especially strict materialists, in principle, acknowledge that direct observation and experimentation are not the only way to gain understanding of our world. But in practice, they tend not to show a real appreciation for logic and philosophical arguments, especially in interpreting the results of scientific inquiry. I just got a letter from a musician named Albert Einstein. <laughs> he sent it in 1912. The mail is a little slow sometimes. <clears throat> but that's not the reason that I just got it. The reason is because he didn't send it to me. He sent it to a friend of his named Arnold Sommerfeld. And I just got it at the library. Anyway, I wanted to read to you a little bit of what he wrote. He said, I occupy myself exclusively with the problem of gravitation and now believe I will overcome all difficulties. But this one thing is certain. I have become imbued with a great respect for mathematics, the subtle parts of which, in my ignorance, I had until now regarded as pure luxury. Einstein worked on gravitation for four more years in what came out is called the general theory of relativity. It is the most fiercely difficult mathematical theory in all of physics. So what did Einstein mean by saying that the subtle parts of mathematics had seemed a luxury? Did he really believe that he was going to get along without doing any calculations? Well, of course not. The point is that physicists have a certain arrogance about mathematics. For example, in today's lecture, you must have gotten the impression that all you have to do is follow some simple rules and you can take the derivative of any function in the world. Well, that's not quite true. Suppose you had a function 
which looked like an Egyptian pyramid. Well, it's easy to see what the slope is here, and it's easy to see what the slope is here, but right here at the peak, you would be in trouble, because it has no slope at that point. The function has no derivative at that point. Now, I never told you anything that would lead you to believe that that could ever happen. You see, for physicists, mathematics is just a tool. It's to be used in order to accomplish something else. But a real mathematician is the guardian of precision and clarity of thought. What interests the mathematician is the mathematics itself. When a mathematician makes a statement about derivatives, the statement takes into account every exception, no matter how bizarre or unusual, like the peak of the pyramid. That's the kind of subtlety that Einstein was worried about. This is what mathematicians do. They observe patterns and develop conjectures. They attempt to either prove or disprove those conjectures while relying on the rules of logic with a precise line of reasoning. It's the arrogance about mathematics, overlooking the abstract nature of mathematics that these strict materialist physicists like Lawrence Krauss, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Stephen Hawking to say silly things about philosophy. Robert Jastrow, Fred Hoyle, and Freeman Dyson recognized the metaphysical implications of the mathematical consequences of the equations of physics. To my knowledge, they never affirmed that a personal God exists but they were keenly aware that evidence arises from the physical sciences that possibly God exists. And it turns out that the physicists who are the most vocal claiming that there is no evidence for God are known to be bad at philosophy with a flawed line of reasoning riddled with fallacious thought. Uh, they just take for granted that they can calculate things and are inadequate to handle the abstractions that come along with the mathematics that undergirds how the world world operates. They can't deal with the postulates that come along with the endeavor of trying to understand how the real world is. It is a reasonable and justifiable inference from logic, mathematics, and direct sensory observation that a personal yet immaterial agent is the effectual cause for the beginning of the universe.